Welcome to the Hot and Healthy Show, conversations that change the way women work and live. I'm your host, Nicole Van Haddam, holistic success coach, TEDx speaker, and best-selling author. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Marie Malouf and Jeff Withers, the co-founders of Love Dynamics, Work Dynamics, and Multiple Brain and Dance Integration, which assists those in both personal and work-related relationships. Learn how to understand, accept, and appreciate the value that each have to offer others and themselves, and to share and grow as confident and independent yet connected individuals through employing their natural talents, skills, gifts, and strengths. Their aim is to remove as much as possible the potential for relationship disruption through awareness, acceptance, learning, and growing. With empathy and engagement through knowledge and wisdom comes success. Our topic today is who is the victim in bullying? Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Now, why did you pick, out of all the things we could be talking about, I mean, love, dynamics, and all the other wonderful things that you do, why did you pick the topic around bullying? Basically, apart from Marie's own personal experience, and I've had a couple, it comes down to we were you know, watching different shows lately. It's a big thing on, the, on social media. And all they talk about is how to fix mm. and how to see when it's happening. And we figured, you know, there's a much better way of looking at this. Mm -hmm. There are you know, ways we can discuss, which is let's get to it beforehand, mm -hmm. recognise it beforehand, because prevention is always better than cure. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We look at preventing and creating foundations for people. So that lovely words at the beginning, it sounded really cool, but mm -hmm. they're actually true because that's exactly what happens when people work with us. Mm -hmm. They change how they, they approach their own lives. So if they are already a bully, it interrupts that pattern and changes the way they do it? If they choose to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, in all these things, no one will change if they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. So they have to understand, first of all, and this is what we go into, we can discuss shortly, a whole series of steps where people will actually discover why it is that they're doing it mm -hmm. and, and how to work back to those basic steps at the foundation level and create a difference that if they choose to, they will see the world differently and they'll engage differently. And if they're engaging differently, it means what happens to them is, hey, they become really good people, mm -hmm. just like yourself. Oh, thank you. So <laughs> you, you touched on something really, I guess, quite important for this conversation, which is that, Marie, you've experienced bullying. Are you prepared to share some of that? Um, well, it goes back to actually when I was at school. I didn't, in those days, and it's a long time ago, you don't realise that it is bullying. You just get picked on and kids are... When I look back, it's actually a jealousy thing because at one stage it was, it was sport, that I loved to play sport but I wasn't given a chance. And because I was nervous, I wasn't confident. I was in a convent, convent and I wasn't confident with myself. So therefore, I wasn't, I wasn't playing sport the best that I could. Um, and I was bullied a lot. I was not picked for any teams. When I went to a public system, the environment was different. They accepted me for who I was and therefore my natural talents came out and I was getting awards every week. For, for, for sport. When I went to high school, I had to start over again because the higher, um, the senior kids were so jealous because I was getting picked for the A grade teens and, you know, they're expecting, oh, the last year in high school, I've got to be in the A grade team. So I was bullied a lot of, uh, um, back in high school as well. And then, you know, in my family situation, but more so recently for six years in the workplace and I just was not coping at all. Um, I was, I got really sick. I'm not a person that always takes drastic measures to get out of a situation. I just took it on the chin because I was, ex I have to do everything 100%. I wanted to, to impress people because I never got that as a child. I never got the love that the, the um, the the gratitude and and all that from family life mm. that when i went to work i was expecting it because i worked so hard 
to do things that I love doing. And I'm a people person. I've got to be around in front of people. And when you get told, no, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, or go and do this and all that sort of thing, and being bullied by senior management, and even one senior man manager said, Marie, you're not like the other project officers. Because I would do things my natural way, um, talking to people, making sure I'd nurture people because that's who I am. But I didn't know that that was who I was and still, until I started working with, with our, our um, profiling system and our programs. And it's only just recently I think that wasn't me back then. This is who I naturally are. This is what I love doing. And when I enjoy that and I'm finding my passion then everything starts to fall in place. Mm. So how do we recognise the difference between, let's say, normal behaviour in the school ground and normal behaviour in the workplace and then what would be considered bullying? How do we identify it? Well, I mean, the, the, if you read the traditional research, we recognise that a guy because somebody wanted to hit you and punch, etc. whereas a girl tends to be more you know, using language and mm -hmm. comments and innuendo to you know, make you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So they're the obvious signs, but the thing is, the signs when you see them are already meaning that something's happened already. Like you, you don't get the sign, oh, no, I'm going to be bullied or I'm going to be a bully. Those signs were happening inside you first. So it's very hard to identify it until it becomes outwardly obvious, um, which is why we say foundation, because we can address it before that happens, then you won't see those signs. You'll see a confident person. And a confident person is never going to be bullied. If they are totally confident with themselves and within themselves and totally sure of who they are, it's very hard to bully someone like that. So only weak or unconfident people get bullied? No, no, but they're the ones that people can see as easy targets. Okay, so is a bully, someone who's <clears throat> doing the bullying thing, is looking for some, uh, looking for a weak spot that can be manipulated? Well, see, here's the thing. Um, at the beginning, we all have, we're all born with two sets of things. One's called your natural behaviours and your talents. But we're also, from day one, are getting learned experiences. So we get these two side by side, and the confusion comes from people where they don't recognise what's theirs and what isn't theirs. Mm. Okay, and then you're modelling from your parents from the day you're, you're there. I mean, forget the words people use, it's modelling actions. Mm. And so people can then become used to being what they think they have to be. And that's what you're looking for. So you answer the question you know, about being a bully or, or being bullied, comes down to um, if my inward focus, if you like, if I'm bullying myself, like I've got no confidence in myself, I always get it wrong, people don't like me, then that comes out. And so I can either address that and be confident and have some self-esteem, some, some take my power back. But as a bully to be, I could say, you know what, I don't like that. I'm going to make sure that people don't do it to me. I become aggressive for it. So a bully doesn't mean a person who is necessarily just a violent or nasty person. Far from it. They're a person who is just trying to get into a place where they feel safe and comfortable. Mm. And unfortunately, the first thing we often hear people say is, they should be punished. Well, yes, in certain cases, they should be. In most cases, let's find out why it's happened. Right. So this comes back to the who is the victim. Who is the victim. Is it mm. the bully or the bullied is the victim in, the, in that circumstance. So we're not mm. born a bully. No. We don't. No. Unless you're a sociopath. Right. Which but is there are extremes and you can't small, handle that. Yeah, yeah, that's an outlier. It's a very yeah. small percentage. Yeah. But in general, we aren't born and look right. around and go, who can I bully and, and who can I make smaller than me and who can mm. I manipulate? Mm. We're all yeah. busy trying to experience the world around mm. us, absorb it. We're curious. We're interested. What happens? What happens to, to turn a, you know, happy in curious little human into a bully. Often it could be something at home where the father has said something and doesn't even realise what they're saying. I've heard cases where a little child has been said to, uh, don't be such a girl, you're a princess. Now, those things might sound innocent to the father, but to that child, that's a big thing. So these things can be happening in the background, not one thing, but several things over time. And that's what starts to become the, the big snowball effect. So like I say, when you see it happening, it's already been happening for a while. Mm. It's all these little things that people go through. Or for example, I, um, you know, I always, I can't get this right. I just mm. cannot do it. And of course, when someone tells me that, yeah, I knew that. I've said it myself. There you so go. It's validating what I it's already believed about yeah. myself. So it's beginning in childhood with the yeah, parents behaving in words mm -hmm. and the way they treat the kids. And the kids don't have any sort of... Uh, map or model that it can be different or needs to be different no. for them well, they simply adopt what they've learned from it's reference point, yeah. right mm. and sometimes the parents don't realize what they're doing mm. no they don't most because of you find that we find when we're talking with couples and that 
it actually is a generational thing. So it can actually come down from generation to generation where the parent is doing the bullying to the child, their parents were doing the bullying to the, the parents and so on and so mm. on, you know. So, so it's, it's a learned behaviour? There are learned behaviours definitely involved. Yeah. But the thing happens where the learned behaviour takes over your natural behaviour. But you don't know the difference, which is what I call confusion state, which is very early in the piece where people are just, I don't know who I am. I mean, we've had people who said, you know, all my life I thought this, and now suddenly, working with you guys, I've realised my father said that. It mm. wasn't mine in the first place. I can so give it back. So this conversation that's in my head, yeah. this belief, this thing that I say about myself, like you were using the example before, I yeah. can't do this, I'm stupid, I'm whatever, yeah. um, isn't your natural state of thinking. It is something that you've been taught to believe about yourself, and you repeat yeah. it so it becomes truth, and then you look for external confirmation that Absolutely. that's true. And that's the self-actualisation part in the model mm -hmm. that says, hey, you know what? I've accepted internally because I know that to be, because that's what I've ever known. Mm. Now suddenly you're telling me by your actions that I must be right, therefore it is right. Now it doesn't just bullying, it could be self-confidence, esteem, um, the ability to relate to somebody else. These are all different types of results. Bullying is just one of the things that come out of this fact that we don't grow up always with the best mix of who we are. Mm. Our engagement strategy hasn't been set correctly by no one's fault, purely by the fact that we grew up in our environment. Like, for example, a father who plays sport has a son who doesn't like sport. Straight away, there's going to be this pressure, and, you know, unconsciously. Why don't you like sport? What's wrong with you? You should be playing sport. Get out and play sport. But I want to play on the computer. No, you should play sport. So these sort of comments immediately are giving someone young uh, like that unconscious signals that maybe I'm not what I should be. And, you know, that's where it starts from. So it's sounding very complex. I mean, you've got generational mm. behaviours that result in you being a bully or having no confidence and being bullied. And then you've got, well, where do you stop that at school? You've got gender bias. You've got all of these but things. So right. how do we help someone who, th who thinks to themselves, I have been a victim of bullying or I've become a bully? I know in my own case, I was absolutely bullied. Mm had a very interesting upbringing and then brought that into the school place where I defended myself by becoming one of the, the bullies because mm. of the bullying, to exactly. defend myself mm. I became exactly. a bully. Yeah. I didn't like who I was and thought, no, that's that's not for me and then changed my behaviours and then got into the workplace and got bullied mm. and then became a bully mm. and then chose a different path. Um, if you've grown up with it, you're not aware that you're making yourself vulnerable by being perhaps Absolutely. insecure or not having enough confidence. So you're making yourself a bit of a target and a soft target. Mm -hmm. What? That's one question. And the other one is, if you believe that you have become a bully, what? Uh, how can you become aware of that? That your behaviour is perhaps being received by somebody else as a form of bullying? Because I think that's a fine line. Mm -hmm. It's a very fine line between and the other. Yeah. What can we do to stop the patterns? Mm -hmm. Who, whose responsibility <clears throat> is it? Well, I mean, people say it's a society's problem or, or responsibility, but at the end of the day, it's a personal responsibility. And when a child is too young to make that decision, it's the parent's responsibility. But the parents have to have the information, the knowledge and the skills in the first place. Mm. And I, I say knowledge and awareness is the biggest thing. Now, we have spent a lot of time and effort studying uh, all, all backgrounds and behaviours and understanding there's, there's a, a natural way. Everybody has a natural way. So it's not wrong to do something, it's just how you do it. Mm. But it has to be recognised and understood by the person. So if, if you personally know why you do what you do and what are you good at and what makes you such a good person, you want to step closer to not needing to be a bully or be bullied because if you're learning, but that's not enough by itself because, you know, you've got so much interference going on. So then we have programs, obviously, because this is really important to us, that says, now, if you accept that we can help you identify who you are and what you are, are you why, what, when, where, if, all those questions. If you accept that and let us work with you and work out your values, your passions, how you engage with people, and that's then from there, let's put together uh, a really nice, compact little program that says, now, here are you on a, on a plate. This is you right now. Are you happy with this? Would you like to be something else? This is how we do it. Not you have to be, but, no, would, but would you, you choose like to be? be? So this is to? who you are or how you're yeah. operating in the world. This is your natural behaviours, talents, skills. Mm. This is your learned behaviours. Mm. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Mm. But then again, I also suggest a lot of people in our area of work would say, find out the learned behaviours and, and, and get rid of them. Well, I would suggest the other way. I would suggest know your learned behaviours and make use of them. Mm, go with your strengths. Go with your strengths. Mm. So I know that's my natural, I know that's learned, but you know what, that's very really useful on a certain occasion. Mm. I'll keep that in my, my, my bag of tricks because that's going to come handy when I need it. 
as opposed to, I don't need that, it's bad, get rid of it, because that's silly. Mm. We've learned things for a reason. Mm. Uh, and so that's, the, that's our, pa- I mean, people say, oh, you do profiling. Well, yes, we do profiling. Yeah, that's what we do. But that's to find out where to start from. Mm. Okay, so it's your, it's your, it's your base starting mm. point. It's the and base then, starting yeah, point. You know, what are the best bits that you want to take forward and who yeah. do you want to be? I, I like mean, it's quite empowering. Well, I find it interesting because so many people in other profiling systems, who haven't mentioned who they are, but the urban knows different profiling systems, mm. they don't go deep enough. We go way deep, right back to the, to the Chinese history of the whole thing, without going into detail here. The point being that we are learning about who we really are. How do we create our own um, flow, which you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. and flow was simply no stress, a place of no resistance, oh, no where everything is resistance. working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good feeling. It's like having a massage all day long. This is just great. Everything's mm-hmm. just feeling good. We can't have it all the time, yeah. but if we know how to get it back mm-hmm. and how to avoid what stops it, it's the same as with bullying. If I know what it is, I know what you're doing, but you can't do that to me because I know about that and I know how to come over it. Then the power mm. of the bully is gone. Mm. So, ha- sorry. So, I used to have a really excellent way of getting out of a stressful day at work. <laughs> yeah, I she would does. be. <laughs> mine was ballroom dancing. As oh, you know, I, probably, yeah. Yeah, I was a competition ballroom dancer. She looked amazing too. I, I did. I, mean, I did. I did. Was there. <laughs> and I would have <laughs> such a stressful day at work that I would. I would go go to dancing after after work, and I would be in tears all day at work um, because I'm a really down to earth. I have a heart that I look after others more than I look after myself, and this is why knowing the profile, you actually there's there's different um, profiles that actually care more about others. Some care about themselves. So I I'm a person that looks after everybody else and cares for, for everyone else. I would go to dancing, and I would just instantly, I could feel myself just draining and all that bad energy was coming out of me and I would be on the dance floor. People used to say to me, oh, you look so beautiful. You look so relaxed. You look so gorgeous. But it's just something that just comes out when you're passionate about something and you love it. You go into a fantasy world, right, that you would just, it it would just ooze out of you. But the trouble with that is that the next day I'd have to go to work. So, because I wasn't fixing up the problem, yeah. I could go to a place where I could go into my fantasy that I love doing. And that's what you hear from singers and, mm. and, and, and artists and that. They, they have, they, they, they go into a, a, a field where they're passionate about it. But the problem is always there. Mm. So they're they're re-energizing by being in flow of what they love to do, mm. but they're not dealing with the underlying problem, the problem that's draining them. Exactly. Let me ask you a question. You're in a rowboat, and there's water coming in, and there's a bucket. What would you do so you don't sink? Find out where the leak is and stick my finger in it. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> you're cool. Wow. You go to the top really... of the class. Oh, yeah, but don't jump off. Gold star. <laughs> Because most people would say, oh, I've got a bucket, I'll get the water out. Mm. I was filling up again. Well, that must be the problem. I'll get the water out. I'll get the water out. Get the water out. It's actually said right to the heart of it. Mm. If I fix the hole, I won't need to get the water out. Wonderful. So what does your profiling system do and, and who is it good for? Well, actually, it's good for, obviously, it's good for everybody. Mm. But it's particularly good for young kids. We can go as low as, what, age five, I think? Age five. Mm-hmm. In one of the programs we use. But it goes right through to any age because no one ever stops Our learning. Age. That old as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> fresh, that fresh. That fresh, yeah. But I mean, like, you know, we, and, and we've, we've known this through neuroscience that we never stop learning. Mm. Therefore, why stop learning about yourself? Mm. So um, the, the, the person who needs to, to do a profile is everybody. And I know that's a cliche again. Everyone should do it. Even if you're doing well, do it. Mm. Because what don't you, you know about yourself? Better. What could you do and what, what you can, can you do, do better? better. Okay. We have so many people say, I'm doing fine. I say, I know you're doing fine. But what is it you don't know? Mm. Will it be bullying or not? What is it you don't know that you could change if you knew? So that the profiles, the initial profile is all about those things, your strengths, challenges, weaknesses, gifts, all those sort of things. And then when we go further, we talk about what your role would be as a single person or in a partnership or in a family. Yes. What value do you provide for people? Mm. Um, how can you create flow for these people? And it's quite a complex mm. report. We're very proud of it. Mm. But then we then say, okay, that's really cool. Now let's go further and let's look at, like I said, your passion. We actually test your passions, your values. So we're really getting a really good in-depth view of who you are. And for a person, that's really confronting. Even for a really switch-on person, you know, like, but that's not me. Well, I'm sorry, but this is... 
what you said. Mm -hmm. So therefore it must be you. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we don't see how other people exactly. experience us yeah. until we mm. see it on paper. It's like, is yeah. that really how I'm operating? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the people either say, I don't want that, or they say, wow, yeah, I can do something with that. I can actually become, you know, I could do this now, or mm -hmm. I can do that now. So, so considering the, the issues that we're having at the moment around bullying in schools, bullying online, bullying in the workplace, how can understanding yourself, we've touched on a little bit, mm. how can understanding ourselves and, and deciding who we are, how can that change the current environment that we're in? Yeah, well, I look at it, and we're just thinking about this recently. To me, there's six steps that we can, and you do it from a young age, you can do it as an adult who suddenly gets bullied. Step one is the foundation. What is your foundation, meaning who are you, what are you, why are you? All those questions, oh, which is all those sort of questions, deep right? Questions. They are deep questions, and people don't often get to the, don't like the answer, but that's yeah. what they are. They often don't ask the questions. No, most no, people don't. No, just go through no. life, yeah. getting busy doing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step, which is your profiling. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, apart from that, say you don't do that. The next step is what I call a stage of confusion, meaning that I'm doing these things as a kid or in the workplace. I'm not sure why I'm doing it, but I just do it. You know, like the girl, the guy, the girl was pushed over on that ad, you know, a while ago. And she falls down and the mother says, it's okay, dear. He's just showing him what she likes you. Mm. Because that's what happened to me. Therefore, it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So this confusion state goes between people inside their heads. What's learned? What's natural? Oh, what this isn't right? normal. This, no. isn't, mm. this isn't okay. No, mm. but they don't know what to do yet. Right. Mm. Now, the problem is, this is where we start to get in, in murky water because the next thing is, it's inward focus. I start concentrating it. So I don't do this well. I'm no good. I can't do it. Mm. Or, I'm, you know, I've got to be tough. Right? And then it becomes acceptance. That's who I am. Now, all this is happening before anyone in the world knows that you're a bully or being bullied because it's all internal. So the next step is when the external signs indicate to start appearing, like withdrawal, etc. So then the psychologist, and I apologise for him one, um, and I mean that because psychologists will track the same traditional ways. Oh, you're showing signs, I can fix it. But we're saying it's too late. The signs have already happened. Mm. So that indicator becomes behaviours manifested, which are an absolute signal for a bully looking for a target. Right. Mm. Okay. Can I just say a little, little secret, which... Um, oh, do I know? No, <laughs> no, about a psychologist, when I was going through my issues at work, I saw a psychologist a particular year and, okay, I listened to what she said and I said, okay, you know, you've got to try to be positive and do all this sort mm. of stuff. And I thought, okay, I tried that. The second time I went to see the psychologist regarding the same thing, the being bullied at work, I'd already studied. I was studying our profiling system. So I started to know, and this is, I know a lot more now, but I started to realize who I am. My profile, it says, eager to please, nurturing, and all these things that you find out exactly who you are. And it's amazing when you find out who you are. And then you start to, build, you know, when I went to the psychologist, you said, oh, you've actually changed. What have you been doing? I said, oh, look, we do a lot of, you know, professional development. I didn't say what it was because they poo poo it in, in um, certain circles. Certain circles. <laughs> and so she was actually, she said, you have changed so much and you are more aware of yourself. I couldn't stop the bullying, even though they tried to remove this person. Um, I couldn't stop that, but I could help myself. Beautiful. And that was the main thing that I think that's what I want to do. I want to help others. Give them their power. Yeah. Yeah. How many times yeah. have you heard, you should believe in yourself. Just be strong. No, just stand up and do it. You should know this. Not once do they say how. Mm. Who's teaching us? No one is. Who's giving us the Nobody is. And this is why you know, I sort of turn my back on psychology in general. While it's a great field, they weren't really looking at what should be happening, which is... Let's find out the how and the why and the what mm. before it becomes, oh, we're in trouble. Mm. Because, and that's why we've got programs like the Engageability Formula, things like multiple brain and dance integration therapy. Mm. These are tools that allow people to then work with what they know mm. towards being something that they really want to be, being the best version they can be of themselves mm. and not keep on being what they always were because mm. that's great, but there might be something better in the corner. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. How can people find out more about you and what you have? Well, I mean, we've got a, a new website uh, about to be launched this week. Um, but I suppose, what's the easiest way? An email address or a Facebook? I think Facebook's a great way. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Mm. Facebook? Yeah. Mm. So what's the best one? Love Dynamics Global. Love Dynamics Global. 
Yes, it is our page on Facebook. Great. All right. So I have some bonus questions. I like these bonus oh. questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. snuck them in. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Jeff. Yes. What keeps you up at night? Thinking. Mm, very, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. 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 Last, especially last night. He had... He, and this is knowing your profiles too. Right. Because Jeff comes up with new ideas all the time. I'm down to words. So I've got to keep Jeff She's under control, right? So he comes to bed. <laughs> oh, come think. I've just got a new idea. I go, oh, Jeff, go to sleep. If you want to work, go down the office. I'm trying to sleep, you know. So knowing who your partner is, is a, a blessing. Because so you're more patient, more yeah. tolerant. Yeah. You still will tell him to go back to bed. I, I, tell tell him off. I tell him off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have actually had the pleasure of spending quite a bit of time with you two, and they're very different. They have different energies, they have different mm. flow, they have different communication styles, <laughs> but there is absolutely this playful banter. There's not a judgment on who each other is. It's no. just like, mm. that's how you are, this is how I am, mm. and there's a playful banter, and I really enjoy that. Mm. So another question. Mm. Marie, mm. what gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah. Um... Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Making it for it. <laughs> now, what gets me out of bed is really simple, and that it only happens when I've got an idea that I've woken up with, or I've got something to do that day, which is really gets me excited. I get bored very easily for doing the same old, same old. So when I know I've got something new to attack, I want to get out and get into it. Mm. By the afternoon, I'm getting tired of it. Mm. But that morning time, to me, morning is the future. And I'm a person of multiple brands with three brands. Heart, there. Yeah. <laughs> the right. Head, heart, <laughs> and stomach. And, we all have, and they have different approaches. That's what's come from the Chinese era as well. Mm. Nothing's coming, no Western science ever created something that wasn't done before. Mm. So to me, I'm a very much in the head type person. So I look at the future. So the morning to me is the future because today hasn't happened yet. I'm excited. This one likes the I'm present. I'm present. And so she'll start work late mm. because she wants to do it. And someone who's a heart um, based person, is scared of, of the of the past because they're thinking, what's going to happen if it could happen again? Mm. So when we and again we have a lot of work we do on that, that mm -hmm. concept. It's really cool. It's, it's a fairly new uh, field. Only been going a few years, but it's amazing because it's taking neuroscience to a new level. That mm. it's really mm. cool stuff because mm. you're so much to learn that you don't know about yourself. Oh, we are so fascinating. It's like an endless journey Absolutely. of discovery it, it on is. yourself. It, it is yeah. fascinating. Mm. And because I'm a people person and my profile. Um, I can actually swing up by the way with my profile. Oh. I'm right in the corner, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> um, I have to. I have to have people around me all the time. Not not a hundred percent, but I have to have people around me. And that's what gets me up in the morning. If I've got to go and see a family or um, somebody that I can actually help and nurture them away to a better life for themselves and share my story to other people, that's what gets me up. Beautiful. After my coffee. <laughs> After Jeff has made you the coffee. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I push thank, out a bit. Well, thank you both for being guests on the Hot and Healthy did Show. You know, did, you, did you know we have actually got an offer for people? Go for it. Yes, we do. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not your Italian accent. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it snuck in. You said something right at the beginning about no accents and you snuck it in there. Sneaky. Okay. okay, in your Australian accent. In my Australian accent. No. What would you like to offer the audience? Well, I know, and they probably don't know, how much better they can be, how much bigger they can be. Mm. And so if they contact us through your community, we would like to offer them a full profiling report system plus an hour's consultation for 25% off. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank mm. you. So is there a code they need to quote, hot and healthy? Oh, we can make one. Oh, I think we can. I think we can. Yeah, we'll make something up we now. Just that up. Hot and healthy. <laughs> Hashtag hot and healthy or code hot and healthy. <laughs> so that's really generous. Thank you so thank much. You. I really no, appreciate your you. time. And make sure that you do reach out to them. Honestly, getting to know yourself is so empowering. Getting to know what is your stuff, what is somebody else's stuff, what's your natural behaviour, get in flow, what's mm -hmm. learned behaviour that doesn't suit you anymore, what could you have more of, less of, etc. Mm -hmm. What a fascinating and empowering state to be in.
greater self-awareness and empowerment. Mm. 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 So we'd love to talk to as many people as possible. Mm. Great. Wonderful. Will you be going into corporates and schools? Yes. Corporates, definitely. Yeah. Schools. schools. As an ex-teacher, even I have trouble getting to the school I used to be mm. at. The schools are very closed, but we keep trying. Mm. Maybe through so parent groups and so on is a better way. Your, your background is teaching mm. and psychology mm. and, and... And music and training. But I like what I'm doing now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> mm. It's wonderful when you can change mm. people's lives. Mm. It is a good feeling. It is. There's nothing it better is. feeling than seeing someone's face light up or seeing them change what they do and love it. Mm. Yeah, you can't buy that. Mm. Especially when they're like, they've been struggling for mm -hmm. so long. And yeah. suddenly they get this aha moment, this little bit of awareness, and they're like, oh, I'm okay. Like, I'm not mm. broken. There's nothing wrong with yeah. me. It's learned behavior, or it's ha habit, or it's environmental, or mm. look, I am a great person. Let me. In Kids got an even better chance mm. because it's in the it's in the home. It's no longer a child trying to learn it. It's the home is doing it differently. Mm. And we have some people that we work with in in Africa and other places where they were good families, but they enjoyed the experience of discovering more mm. because they know that there's a family more enhancing what's already working. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one of our things that um, we like to aim to do is that the next generation coming through are a lot um, happier and more in tune with themselves more mm. you know we don't there's just so much bad things out there in the world you don't want to turn on the news because there's always something bad happening and, and especially in bullying because it's on the news all the time now mm. but we just want to stop that cycle we want to sort of disrupt that cycle so that mm. you know the next generation coming through have got haven't got to worry about that there are other things to worry about but at least this that doesn't have to be one. Doesn't that doesn't be, have to yeah. be one. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, mm. I wish you all the best. Thank you Thank so you. much. And definitely grab that mm. special hot and healthy and get twenty five percent off. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. If you like this episode, make sure you hit the subscribe button and go and check out all our other videos. I'll see you in the next one.